What's up, modern setters? Today we're gonna to be harvesting our heritage breed meat birds. The ducks are going crazy. We're not gonna show you step by step harvesting them. If you guys wanna see how a complete guide how to do that, we'll link a video here that we've done before. Today we're gonna to be showing you our scalder that we have from Wright's Farm Products. And we're gonna be showing you the plucking setup. And we'll just be showing you our whole layout and how we do it. We had a few questions on how we were harvesting towards the end of the process, so we'll get more in depth and detailed on that part. But the bloody, gutty, gory stuff, we're gonna leave out of this video. We know we have a lot of families and kids who watch this channel. First, we need to get this halfway filled up with water. One of the first things you want to do when you're getting ready to harvest your animals is you want to get your scalder all set up and working, whether it's an electric one or if it's a propane one. It takes a little while to get your water up to 145 degree temperature. So we got to get this pot going and then we can go ahead and get everything else set up. This is going to be our first time using this scalder, so it's plugged in. Turn it on and see what happens. We got it set for 145. It says it's on, and it's 58 degrees right now. That was some ice cold water. Let's see, it's 635. Now we have our yard bird chicken plucker. This thing's been a huge game changer. It makes the process so much more enjoyable. I don't know if enjoyable is the right word because it's still not enjoyable, but it makes it so much more, you can enjoy it a little bit. It's a lot less time consuming. It's a lot less tedious. It's a lot quicker. We are hoping that that scalder is just as much of a game changer for us with our harvesting process as this plucker was. Remember when you're setting up your workstation area, you want to remember a good flow. So for us, it's a little backwards. Our cone station should be on that side, so you could go cones, scalding, plucker, table for butchering. One of the things I really am impressed with is these birds were in with the Cornish crosses. The Cornishes were in here for eight weeks and they were very dirty. These have been in here for five more weeks and they're clean. Their feathers are nice and clean. It's okay, buddy. Yeah. Pluto, stop. With all the birds running around, 
this nippler must have got knocked and it keeps stripping. So I just want to take it out and see if there's anything stuck in there. If I have to, I can replace it later. But while we're in here, might as well stop and check everything. Seems to be good now. I think with just all the birds in here knocking these around, something got messed up in it. So if you see something like that, just stop and check because if we run out of water, it won't be good for the pullets. So even up to this part, you want to be nice. All the way to the end, you want to be nice to your birds and treat them with all your animals and treat them with respect. It does make a difference in the meat. Think about when you're all stressed out and anxiety, how you feel. You can just feel it running through your body, something running through your blood, cortisol or something, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but there's something running through your blood when you get stressed out and all anxious. You don't want that in your meat. So if you can keep your birds happy and calm the whole process, the meat is gonna be better for you and your family. And that's why we do all this. And plus, we just want to respect our animals. They are giving us some awesome, nourishing food to feed our families with. Let's go check and see what temperature the scalder is up to. So it's been over here for about a little over 40, a little about 50 minutes, and it's up to 113. When we started, it was 53. It was cold, cold, cold well water. So it's up to 113 now. They do make a 240 volt scalder, but this is what I was thinking. The average person is going to have 110 volts just to plug it into, so it takes longer this way. 240 is about half the time, but then if I want to go and I want to go butcher somebody else's chickens for them at their place It's gonna be a lot easier for them to have a 120 plug than it is a 240 And if you're off-grid you can use a generator. I hear the pigs using their automatic feeder. Let's go check on it you Guys hear the slamming of course they stopped Good morning girls why don't you show us how you use your feeder? Go ahead, go use your feeder for me. Do I gotta go over there? All right, let's see if we can get you to do it over here. You gonna show me how you use it? Go ahead. We wanna see how you use your feeder. I've been hearing you all morning using it. Go ahead. You know, there's two holes. There's one, there's one for each of you. I did give you your own hole. You're silly. So one thing we found that made a big difference for us was finding the right height on this table. So that way, if it's too, if it's too low, you're hunched over and your back gets sore after doing it for a while. If it's too high, you're stretching. So you, just, you want to find a nice, comfortable working height for you. This is how we've solved our problem. I know, it's, I know someone's gonna ask, and I'm not gonna have the answer. So let's figure it out right now. We'll take Gina's, or Olivia's, fabric tape measure and find out. The height that we like is 33 and a half inches. So that's just like regular countertop height. The nice thing about having a mobile setup like this is, once you have it and you spent the money on it, it's a lot easier on yourself when you're harvesting your own animals. And you can go out and you can make money with this stuff. You can take this to anybody's homestead, anybody's house, backyard, farm, and you can charge them for doing this. You're gonna want to cool this setup with water, ice, and raw apple cider vinegar. Keep that in the shade. It'll stay cooler longer. The plucker we find it's better to have a hose set up with a nozzle 
and just to spray it when you need it instead of having your water hooked up to your plucker and spraying constantly. So we want to have a setup so we can catch the blood that we get from the chickens. We want to have a carbon sauce in there to catch it. It makes it a lot easier to put it in the compost pile and we'll compost it for next year's garden and it'll grow us some awesome food. We need to utilize everything we can. I was just going to tell you about that and then you're over there. Look at far right squash plant. This big one? This big one, but look at it close. Do you see a buttercup squash growing already? Oh no, I didn't. That's so cute. I just I noticed that this morning. That. I think it's so cool when it does that. Yeah, and it's growing up here. I mean, it's getting pretty high just since the other day. So the scholar is up to 145 degrees. It took right around an hour and a half to get up to temp, and that was starting with ice cold well water. All right, let's try doing two birds at once. Two at once. Two at once. Yeah. Well, we gotta have two in the plucker with these birds we found up there. Let's try to scald them at the same time. It's gonna be another. You just don't wanna leave them in. If you leave them in, you'll burn the skin. You gotta dip them. Squirt me. Squirt? Yeah. Look how yellow those feet are. But these birds are so much cleaner than the cornishes. I like that. They're not all dirty and covered in poo. And they were in with the cornishes. Yeah, with these ones. The bats we had weren't bad last time. Where do you want to pull? Just try pulling. And then we'll try some. One more dip. And then we'll go get them in the plucker. The plucker? I want to close the lid so we keep it warm. All right, here we go. So these birds are noticeably smaller than the Cornishes, but a lot of people say the, her the heritage breeds' feathers come out a lot hotter. We're finding that these feathers actually come out better. They, the carcasses are coming out so clean. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful bird. Two at a time seem to work good. It's a nice day out. This nice. All right, you want to hit the power button on down there. Yep. <laughs> Coming out so nice. Oh, there's a couple kale feathers. It's a lot cleaner than the Cornishes, that's for sure. A lot less feathers stuck on them. Saved all this extra skin right here to make a flap to hold our legs. See all that nice yellow fat? That's pasture raised goodness right there. You want to save as much as that of that fat as you can. I know us Americans were scared of fat, but good healthy fat is good for you. Make a little slip. Bada boom. Bada bing. Look how pretty that bird looks. Isn't that beautiful? 
Ain't that beautiful? Wouldn't you want to give that to your mother for a Christmas present? I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind it for a Christmas present either. Get the deer out of it. Maybe it's a neck first. Heat shrink bags, they work awesome. We gotta show you one of our favorite tricks. We're gonna have residual water. We'll eat them up fast enough, it doesn't work. So you're gonna need a straw. Put your straw in the bag, inside the carcass of the animal, twist it, and have your lovely assistant start a zip tie for you. Try and get points for it? No. You want to have your hot water heated up to 185 degrees. Let's go on over. These bags are made in the USA and they're BPA free. We'll leave a link for everything we used here today down in the description below. These bags just work so much nicer than the other ones we had. They shrink up so nice. All right, we're gonna stick the chickens. Oops, it was my thing. We're gonna stick the chickens in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours. This is supposed to help break down the meat and make it so they're not as tough. That's what I've heard quite a few different sources say. So the, we normally don't do it with the Cornishes. We don't have a problem with the uh, meat being tough. But where these are a heritage breed, we'll leave them in here probably till two days and then we'll stick them in the freezer. What if we leave, put one right in the freezer and see? Are you gonna remember which one it was? We'll That's stick it in the, the freezer. Thing. Stick one in the freezer and do a comparison. Mm -hmm. right, put it in the. Don't put your head up. Do the coldness from the freezer so it's nice. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We hope you learned some stuff from it. And we'll leave a link in the description below to all the different products we use today. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at... I don't know how to <laughs> <laughs> Love the, Love the Acre is a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye.